Peter Chang here from Macho Cave TV and welcome to part one of how to airbrush your RC car. And what you notice here in the wheel wells of this body is that it actually indicates where to cut body posts for your RC car. So for example, like if you have a Traxxas, you would use one of the body posts and if you have Team Associated, you would use another body post or HPI and LOSI. Now the problem with these body posts is that they're not entirely accurate. Like for example, uh, Losi might change one thing or Traxxas might change another thing and you might find these body pulse indicators uh, just highly inaccurate. Uh, for example, uh, one recent one I could think of where, where it just went by the body pulse was a Kyosho uh, car and it just didn't line up at all. So whatever you do, just uh, I would suggest maybe not trusting those uh, body posts. Also, another tool you're going to need is a X-Acto knife. So you need this when you score and start cutting things out. So, for example, uh, I might use the X-Acto knife to start scoring the body areas where it might be more difficult to remove. Uh, another suggestion is to use curved Lexan scissors. You could actually use regular scissors, but it doesn't cut through uh, this Lexan plastic very easily. Also, the curved scissors would help you when you're when you're cutting through the wheel wells. Uh, also, another thing I highly recommend is a reamer. And my favorite reamer to use would be the hoodie uh, reamer. And now, when I first started painting RC cars, I never thought, you know, you would need a reamer. But in essence, the reamer is actually a great tool to have if you need to make perfectly round holes. Or, or more professional looking holes so that's why I decided to purchase a reamer now if you're only just painting like one or two RC cars you may not need a reamer but if you're purchase if you're painting uh, RC cars for your friends and family um, or if you're charging other people to paint their RC cars I highly recommend picking up a reamer now the other thing is like when you cut out the wheel wells uh, it's kind of jaggedy, so I highly recommend picking up some 600 grade, you know, fine weight uh, sandpaper. And you can find this at most hobby stores, and it's not going to uh, set you back all that much. You know, they might, some hobby stores might just charge a dollar for it. Uh, and the reason why I, I like to sand it is that uh, the overall uh, job just looks much more professional and everything looks smooth and uh, like like it's essentially like laser cut at a uh, at a factory. So two schools of thought here uh, when you're putting in body post holes. Uh, some people would tell you like, hey, don't uh, don't cut the holes until you paint everything. Um, and I find that when I do that, I tend to uh, mess up the paint when I when I am like uh, putting in holes in there. Also. I, I like to measure everything out before I put in a hole in there. This is just because, um, mainly just for uh, fitment reasons. Uh, before I put any paint on the car, I like to measure it all out, make sure that everything is fitting before I before I punch through the holes. Also, uh, it gives me a chance to check to see uh, if the factory molded indicators for the holes are actually lining up and I see it's it's lining up for me for the front but for the rear body posts it's not lining up this is because my car is a SCX SCX 60 CF conversion kit and the conversion kit isn't on one of these these uh, body kits but the uh, team associated SC10 kit is so I could use the SC10 kit for the uh, I could use the SC10 markings for the front holes, but for the rear holes, there is no indicator, so I had to measure that out. Now, if you never used a reamer before, I highly suggest maybe just practicing on a scrap piece of Lexan. Uh, I'm going to show you this here, and and this is just typically what happens. Um, if you're a newbie, you you, you feel like you're going to be breaking everything. Uh, don't worry about it too much and just keep pushing your way through. Uh, also, I highly recommend the hoodie reamer because 
it it gives the indication of measurement as well and if you're not too sure about the measurement it it's a uh, it's I, w I would highly recommend it because as you're let me demonstrate as you're punching through um, you may really have no idea how far you're punching through and how big the hole is going to be uh, one advice is if you do have a reamer and you don't have any markings or indicators on it take a scrap piece of Lexan and start counting the turns how many turns is it going to take for you to uh, get like a say a nine millimeter hole or a six millimeter hole or, or however, however long of a dimension of a hole that you're going to be needing. So just highly recommend just testing that out uh, if you don't have a, a length indicator or a measurement indicator. Uh, some of the cheaper ones like ones by Proltech are starting to come out with a uh, measurement. So I would, I would recommend those as well too. Just anything, any reamer that gives you an indication of how far it is 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 going to be worthwhile um, you don't really necessarily need to get a very high-end reamer um, I just got the hoodie one because I trust the hoodie tools so much and I really respect them and I really feel that uh, this is the the best reamer that money can buy and I do paint a lot of uh, cars and bodies for for my buddies and stuff so I do this quite a bit so it's it's not like I'm just painting one RC car body and it may not justify the cost of the reamer uh, but I do do quite a bit of cars and quite a bit of stuff so so I do find myself punching through holes quite a bit uh, the reamers do ship in two different sizes and uh, you can get them in the uh, and also uh, limited editions as well too. Um, there's a small body reamer and there's a large body reamer and I find that most of my work is actually in the small category and I don't really need to punch in holes that big. But as you can see now I've punched in my first hole and I'm just checking fitment making sure that everything's okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and punch in the second hole and I'm going to just take my time with this. Uh, and just remember, it's not a competition. You're not competing against anybody as you're punching in holes in the body shell. Um, also, before you punch in the holes in the body shell, I highly recommend just double checking to make sure that the body is on straight. Uh, even if you are going to use just the uh, guide posts from the manufacturer, the suggested uh, mounting hole slots from the manufacturer. I highly recommend just double checking to make sure that it is lining up uh, straight on your RC car body. Sometimes the the body posts are warped uh, or or aren't uh, aren't uh, even worse. Sometimes like they, they may not be warped, but the uh, the screws may not be tightened. So you, before you even uh, put on the put put on the body and make the measurements. Make sure that everything is tight and that the body posts aren't warped. Uh, if they are, maybe try swapping them out temporarily with one that you know that is straight and before you, you punch in the hole with the reamer. Um, it's just, you know, so whenever you're, you're doing something with the reamer, I highly suggest just, you know, measure twice, then cut once. And it's only because um, if you mess up um, and you put in, you're trying to, punch in your second hole, chances are your second hole is very close to your first hole and you've created too big of a hole because they're side by side. Both holes would be side by side. So uh, I tend to start with the front end of the chassis first uh, just because it gives me a better indication of where to punch in the the rear holes. So um, I know some some of my friends like to punch in from the front, but I like or from the back. But I like I prefer punching in from the front. Uh, just it's it's just more more uh, more simple for me uh, visually just to get one side done first. And and I know some people punch in left, then they go right. Um, but I I find that when I punch from left and then go right, uh, there's like alignment issues for me. So. I like to make sure that the front end is squared and then then I like to just check the back end then. 
Um, pretty much, I, I'm really loving this hoodie reamer. Uh, it's it's very sharp uh, and it's very easy to use and the gauge is very easy to read. So as I'm turning in, um, I'm getting the sense of like what the uh, dimensionality is. And it's also also nice to know that uh, um, after certain turns, I, I am at the right size, so I don't have to guess uh, as to how many turns I've made or or how deep or how far I have to go. Uh, everything is pretty much just set and locked in. So pretty much, uh, I highly suggest getting a reamer if you're going to do this quite a bit. Um, you could, there's nothing really stopping you also from using uh, an X-Acto knife or uh, or drill as well too. Um, just so you know, if you're using a drill, um, it, it does get pretty hot, or, or not a drill, but say like you're using a Dremel, uh, it does get pretty hot and the, the Lexan might melt on you too. Um, stay tuned for part two of our RC car airbrush painting guide. And thanks for watching, and remember, everything matters.